Welcome again to another episode of Indie Reads TV, brought to you by Pages Promotions. Um, today, we are here speaking with Katie Spina, who is an amazing author herself, and she does some really cool outreach programs to enhance literacy with children and with adults. So we're going to get in and, and talk with her right away. So. Katie, hi. Thanks for coming. Hi. hi. Thank you so much for having me, Diana Catherine. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so let's, first of all, talk about um, how you, how did you get this this in idea that you were going to work with um, adults in a writing group? I know that that's one of your focuses. You kind of do that mm -hmm. in conjunction with the Troy Library. So how how did that idea come about that you wanted to work with with people and help them do their writing. So around 2011, um, my my son was two and I hadn't written really in a couple years and I was starting to feel down. I'm like, I really want to write. And I got an idea that that flash of inspiration for a novel. And I started writing and I realized I needed a community that yes, you write alone, but it's hard work and sure. it can be harrowing and it and it can get frustrating especially when you're struggling with um, depression or anxiety and so having a community is so important and it makes it so much easier so I started going to a couple um, writing conferences mm -hmm. and I went to the local one and tried to assemble a group myself and that didn't quite work the uh, that kind of fizzled out but then there was this wonderful librarian at the Troy Public Library, um, Erin, and I regret that I've forgotten her last name. Sorry, but she's moved on. The best of us. Yes, and she's <laughs> moved on to greener pastures, and I'm very happy for her. Um, but she started uh, NaNoWriMo, the National Novel right. Writing Month. Right. For, um, for those people who don't know, National Novel Writing Month happens in November every year, and the challenge is 30,000, no, 30 50. days, 50,000 mm -hmm. words. Works out to 1667 words, 1667 words per day, which I find very doable, but a lot of people kind of scoff at it. My problem yeah. with NaNoWriMo is it's at Thanksgiving, and I'm usually yeah. cooking, so that's my biggest challenge. Yeah. Were you working toward a NaNo challenge at the time? I did. I, I decided I was, uh, that I was interested in doing NaNo again, that I'd had a successful year the year before, and so I joined the library group, and I didn't make it to 50,000 words, okay. but I did form a nice relationship with Erin, and then she started the adult writers group at the Troy Public Library, mm -hmm. and we met, and I started going and really enjoyed the group. And then Erin got a new job at a different library, and there weren't any other librarians that were interested in taking up the group and moving forward. And so it was such a, a benefit to the community that I couldn't let it go. And so I said, all right, I'll, I'll take it up. Well, we're really glad you <laughs> did. Um, just tell me briefly a little bit, what are the goals of the group? Is this a critique group? Is it a writing group? Is it a sharing group? W what exactly does the group do? And then also let us know when and what time so that yeah. we can come to. Absolutely. So it's a critique group that is designed, that is intended to uh, build and support writers and to build stronger writing. Okay. Um, so it is intent, it is designed as a safe space. So we don't insult writer, we don't insult writers, we don't insult the writing. Mm -hmm. um, I am very conscious of my role as leader. So there will be times where I back up and I don't say a lot um, because my critique or my feedback may come off as harsh to uh, a newer writer um, because it's it's hard. To yeah. take to take feedback, um, and we've evolved as the group has gone along. Um, so I try. I have a an email list, and so I'll send out the pages beforehand, mm -hmm. so that people get a chance to read them. And then uh, there, I'll make copies at the library, and we sit down and we read through. It's a maximum of five pages. Okay, just because that that tends to be a good balance that people tend to lose their interest after after five pages. Sure, um, and that lets us we meet on the fourth Thursday of every month at okay. the Troy Public Library okay. from 7 to 
Oh, wonderful. So okay. at five pages, we can usually have a good reading and discussion for at least two to three people. So do you have to submit something in order to be a part of the group? Or can you just come and lend your opinions and learn? Um, what's the requirement there? Everyone is welcome. You do not have to submit. You do not have to, uh, you, you you don't necessarily have to contribute um, if you want to just come and listen okay. you are more than welcome to Excellent. Um, we really appreciate people offering up their insight because everybody's perspective is different and one of the wonderful things about the group is that we have lots of different writers. So we've had uh, nonfiction essays, we've had uh, magazine articles, uh, poetry, we've got some, some poets, mm -hmm. as well as fiction. So we have short fiction pieces, portions of um, portions of novels. We've had the first five pages, a random five pages, that a uh, scene that someone was really struggling with. So it's, it's a great variety and a very open group that the goal really is to make a stronger piece of writing. Excellent. I, yeah. I know how important it is, being a writer myself, I know how important it is to have that feedback, um, not just to know am I doing well or am I doing poorly, but simply to have a community to land with is really, really nice to be able to say, oh, you know, th there are people just as bizarre as I am in the world and we all like the same weirdness. Um, so yeah. that having that community, I, I facilitate a writer's group, as you know, on Wednesday mm -hmm. nights. Yeah. So it's nice to have that community to fall back on. So I, I really applaud you for stepping up when the librarian stepped out. Yeah. Well, and one of the fascinating things that happened with this group is it started and we were just sharing some pieces and then there was a month where no one had anything to share. And it started to be, there were a couple months where no one had anything to share. Mm -hmm. So then we got to, into discussions about our writing practice okay, and how to, how to work through writer's block or how to find time how to make time, rather. Yeah, how that to make time. time balance thing is a e challenge. Exactly. And that started me thinking about focusing on the writer uh, rather than the writing. And so I've I've had this website, katiespina.com, for, mm -hmm. uh, for a few years now. And I was always trying to figure out what I wanted to blog about. What did I want to contribute to the writing community? Because there are so many great things out there and so many um, wonderful insights about the querying process or uh, short story prompts and things like that. And what did I have to, to offer to the community? And what I have is my experience as a writer. So I've got the degree in writing mm -hmm. and the job, the professional job that's in the right, that's writing for mm -hmm. customer service and then in, in manuals and things. So I've been very fortunate that my whole life gets to be about writing. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I, so I started the idea of the five minute free write because life gets so busy. I, I'm, I work full time mm -hmm. and I'm a novelist and mm -hmm. I have a nine year old son. And so finding that time to write can a be difficult. A multitude of challenges. Exactly. <laughs> and sometimes just finding the motivation to write. Sure. That I've got the time, I sit down and where do I even start? And that's where the five minute free write comes in. So instead of having a story prompt where you have the stress of, okay, you're going to produce something. You're going to make something worthwhile or something that you would be willing to share with someone else. The five minute free write is literally five minutes to yourself writing for yourself. And they're craft based. Mm -hmm. So it's it's about expanding it's, practice. It's about exactly. putting that energy in a little bit every day, making it a habit. I don't know, maybe it was Stephen Covey said, uh, somebody important like Stephen Covey said, um, it takes 30 days to make a habit. It's, it takes 60 days to make it second nature. So mm -hmm. if you do a little bit every day, it doesn't have to be an hour every day. It can be mm -hmm. five minutes every day. Exactly. 
So I, I like that you've given that ability um, or, or that yeah. opportunity, I should say, to, to writers to come to your website and say, oh, yeah, I can write on that for five minutes. And then they can yeah. strengthen their craft that way. Exactly. And it's explaining some of these and, and ex- explaining some of the, the advice that we get in a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Because there's I've, I'm sure you do the same thing that I read. Uh, I I'm probably down to like once a year, but I prefer every six months or so to pick up a new book on craft mm-hmm. and, you know, an editing book, how to, how to edit for and how to do this or how to do that. And it's the same advice, right. just told from a different perspective. And it resonates with us differently. Sure. That some books that work for this person don't, yeah. you know. And so... I think I own mm-hmm. the entire Writer's Digest library. <laughs> just for that reason. Because even yeah. though it might be another book on plot, it's presented in a different way that maybe you'll get a little piece that you didn't get on the last six books on plot. Exactly. Like self-editing for... Was it self-editing for writers, I mm-hmm. think is what it's called, the mm-hmm. Writer's Digest. I loved that book. Yes. I thought it was yeah. fantastic and practical and wonderful. Um, but it was the same advice that is always given, you know, remove that and then things like that. And so I take these ideas with, um, like, what is voice or mm-hmm. um, what are genderless pronouns and and. I talk about it in a few paragraphs, and I usually connect it to my life. I like to be personal sure. and share that, you know, we're in well, this gives, journey together. Uh, it gives other writers, too, an opportunity to see how they might use it with their life. Exactly. And then, okay, so this is what we're writing up. This is what your focus and what we're writing on today. I think it's fabulous that you're you're building this community. This is just really wonderful. I, I'm Thank remiss you. that I have not had a schedule that's allowed me to attend yet, but it's on my no. calendar. You gave me those upcoming dates, yes. so I, I put them on my yes. calendar. So I want to kind of segue a little bit. Um, I'd like to talk about this wonderful little thing. Yes. <sighs> Dig it out. This is yes. just a really sweet little book. Um, so I want you to kind of tell us about this. Um, how long ago did you publish and uh, what was the inspiration for this fun little book? So I published this last year. Okay. Uh, I published this last April. So April 2018. And it started as a short story actually in March. Okay. That I wrote it on March 11th. And I know that because that is my dad's birthday. (laughs) All right. Um, This year, my dad has been gone 15 years. I'm sorry. It's, it's, I've reached a good place with it. So thank you very much. Um, But his, his birthday last year was just kind of a rough day. And I was at work and I said, I need to write something. I need to write something. I need to write something that'll, uh, that I can write out these feelings so that I can fully understand what it is that I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to think of what a good topic would be. And I said, well, I had started the Awesome Authors Kids. I had a class mm-hmm. of elementary students that I could write a story for. And I'm like, I will write something for my students. And out of that came Gigi the Groundhog, who dug away from her feelings. And nice. and she dug and and but no matter how far she went, they caught up with her and and she had to recognize that her strength wasn't in this sweater that she had loved so much, but that strength was always inside her, and that she could be Brave Knight Gigi without her armor. Fun. And so and the drafting so, process. Uh, uh, the oh, groundhog. Yeah. How did you come up with the groundhog? Um, I think it had a lot to do with that we had a groundhog in our backyard that had dug out the posts to our deck so okay. that it collapsed the deck. <laughs> All right. So I'm like, well, groundhogs like to dig. Yes, they do. <laughs> <laughs> and I think all of these pieces, you know, all of those pieces of my life kind of came together into this okay. There's a groundhog, and what do you name a groundhog? Gigi. So Gigi. Um, what age group is this book written for? It's a, a read to me, and then about at a, a second grade level. Okay. So an advanced first grader could probably read it to themselves. There are some larger words. Um, because it's self-published, some of the pages have more text than... Uh, These are a, just some really average, great pictures. And this one, I'm so glad you picked it. This <laughs> one right here on the right is my absolute favorite picture in the whole book. 
the where she has her sweater tied around her neck like a cape. Like a cape, yeah. 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 That's it's, wonderful. Yes, thank oh my you gosh. so much. I'm and I'm looking forward to sending this to my niece. I I my nieces and nephews have it. I actually just sent a copy down to my cousin and her children in Illinois. Fabulous. So I'm I, sending I, it all over. I'm I'm the aunt that gives books. So So am I. Yeah, I I'm the aunt that gives books. <laughs> I I have nieces and nephews and and they all know what that square present is under the Christmas tree every year because, you know, oh, that must be from Aunt Diana. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. They I all get, know it's a book. Oh, they yeah. they get it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do cards. You get a book. Yeah. Here's yeah. a toy and a book. Yeah. Yeah. And I rarely send the toy. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're still they're still young enough that I'll get a toy. I'll give them a toy, but then it's two or three books. So, um, awesome author kids. Yes, tell us about that. Oh, so we've I'm got about so ten minutes left. Perfect. So I want you to talk a little bit about okay. what that is, what you're doing, and how it um, is connected to the book festival that you do every year. Yes. So, awesome authors kids is. Are writing classes that encourage children to write. That writing is a skill, and where school focuses on how to do it right and how on grammar and and things. Awesome Authors Kids focuses on a willingness to do the work, because as a skill, you don't get better unless without practice. Sure. And so my job is to try to meet the kids where they're at and make it fun for them to do the practice. So that they'll be, I don't, as they're reading their stories, I don't correct grammar. It's, I focus on, that is an excellent idea. Where could you go with that further? Uh, what age groups do you work with? Right now I'm working with elementary students. Excellent. Uh, so that's gen generally second through fifth grade. Um, I'm actually working on a workbook for writing your first novel for middle schoolers. Excellent. And I'm putting together a an eight-week course. Uh, workshop with middle schoolers that I'm hoping either Lake Orion, Rochester, or potentially both. So are um, you in schools right now? I mean, now, not I'm, now because it's summer, yeah. but are, are you working in partnership with some school districts now? Right now I work with Morse Elementary in Troy School District, and okay. uh, Principal Zendler is in wonderful. She's just wonderful and the PTO has been incredibly supportive as well um, and part of the my ability to do that to do the classes with Morse Elementary is that I organize the Morse Elementary Book Bazaar okay which is like the Scholastic Book Fair except all of the authors are there and so it's we we organized the cafeteria and this year was our second year. We actually had 20 authors this year, which was nice. phenomenal, which means we got a variety from picture books all the way up to middle grade readers. Excellent. And uh, the kids that the kids that came through had a wonderful time. Um, we uh, we asked to bring in uh, Project Kids Site, which is the Lions Club does free vision screenings. Oh, wonderful. So, so books and reading books and vision. And, and what a great idea. Exactly. <laughs> and our, our turnout this year was adequate, though we've been brainstorming some ideas on how to make it better for next year because it's... Uh, it's an investment for authors, and so of we course. want to have a great turnout for them to make it beneficial for them. You know, it, it's always a challenge. I, I've done a couple of these mm -hmm. on my own. I've worked with other people on doing book festivals, and, and as you know, we have one coming up shortly. Yes. By the time this airs, it will have been over, but we'll have another one in October. So um, the challenge is, what's the right day? What's the right time? How close are we to a holiday? Is that going to interfere? The list is crazy. Have it you found really the is. same thing when you're doing this? Yes. And it's for a niche. You're, you're working on a, a smaller niche than we are. Yes. Um, you're just working with children's books. But have you found the same crazy list of, oh, my goodness, what do I take into consideration here? Yes, because what I failed to take into consideration this year, which really affected our turnout, was Mother's Day. Ah. That we had, that I picked, that I said oh, it was just the same weekend that we did it last year. Only this year it was Mother's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. So it was the day before Mother's Day. A lot of people were already busy and couldn't come. Yep, yep. And so one of the things we're looking at is actually tying it into March's reading month. 
so that we'd have this event on the last Saturday of March and it we'd build it up with the PTO and we're looking at um, the, the one of the things that I love about the Morse PTO is they're very supportive of this event that's great and they very much and so they want to make it a success and so we recognized that we need to get the kids more engaged in wanting to come Mm -hmm. and really in more incentivizing them to come so we're looking at like bingo cards where or punch cards and if and they get their they get all of their punches from the different authors at the different tables and then they can earn they earn a prize or they earn a, you know they so get a piece of candy it, so it's kind it's, of like an author or a, a literary treasure hunt kind of an idea exactly which would be a lovely way to really engage the kids mm-hmm. and their parents or grandparents whoever happens to bring them along yes but how nice that you're giving children an opportunity to meet real live authors yes. and and really talk to them about craft and talk to them about how they mm-hmm. made their books. Um, yeah. That's a, a great service that you're offering children. Thank you. And the other half of that is that it allows the authors to find each other, that it's mm-hmm. building a children's authors community. Because while I uh, I appreciate people like you that put on the events, there's the one at, there's the, the book event at Leon and Lulu right. um, that they hold regularly that there aren't many children going there so that Mm -hmm. the children's authors aren't necessary they don't have that that kid saying buy me this book right you know where if we have it engaged at the school and it's all children's authors then then there's a a bigger draw and to bring the children and to bring the families and it it becomes more of an educational field trip than a shopping excursion exactly that's a great idea exactly If there's any way that we can help, you know, we definitely want to have you back on for another show just before the event goes on. But if there's any way that we can help to promote or to support, please let us know because we do a lot of community service work with children as well. Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure that you get the full measure of support that you've got coming. Thank you. you. This is a really important issue. I'm very passionate about literacy with children especially. So if there's any way that Pages Promotions can help you, just let me know. I appreciate that. And I'm actually looking to, we've we've moved north, so we're in a new school district, and I'm actually trying, I've been trying to connect with the PTO at our new school mm-hmm. so that we can have another, an, uh, another book bazaar in the fall so that we can Excellent. expand out beyond just this one school because this one school is wonderful and it's very supportive and it has great literacy programs, um, which is part of why I've been, been so fortunate to uh, build uh, build the event and mm-hmm. to build Awesome Authors Kids, uh, but we want to. I want to to go further. So, uh, you, we've just got about five minutes left. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me a little bit more about Awesome Authors Kids and how parents can get their children involved. Well, uh, so one of the the nice things that I've uh, about being part of the writing community is I've learned about a, a site called Patreon, and what Patreon is is it's a subscription site. Okay. And so, um, awesome authors' kids in the classrooms. I've the book bazaar allows me to to hold classes in the classroom in the mm-hmm. classroom at Morris. But I wanted to do more and reach more kids. And so, through awesome authors' kids, uh, there's um, uh, weekly posts. And there's different subscription levels that we're not going to get into right. because this is not a sales site. Well, and but it's so much information it, we just don't have really time for is. today. It yeah. really is. But the, at different levels, and there's writing prompts, and there's targeted writing prompts mm-hmm. that's specific to your child's interests. And then there's where if you have a specific goal that we'd meet and ha- that we'd meet online or dis- and discuss via email, and have a specific goal for that month that we want to to produce more or or write coherently and we'd have targeted projects and so while I'm focused on uh, a broader a broader audience there's still the opportunity to have a more personal uh, one-on-one connection with young writers so if I understand correctly then this is primarily an online program it, now it's it not a moved, physical yeah. sitting in the classroom or summer camp kind of thing. It's more of an online students work with their families um, and in conjunction with you through yeah. through the website to do more writing 
projects. Um, if yeah. you found a church group or a school that would like to interact on a more personal level, is that something you'd be willing to do to go to groups? Girl Scouts, Brownies, mm -hmm. whomever, absolutely, and and go out and work with kids on these writing programs. Absolutely, that would that would be wonderful. I was looking at um, coordinating a summer uh, uh, a summer session for this year, but I just missed the cutoff mm -hmm. um, with moving and everything else. Yeah, it's one of those things it's you got to do six months in advance, exactly, <laughs> and it just didn't work out. And so that's where the the energy for that then went to the website and to the online community. Um, but I very much am looking at, um, I do um, on the second Saturday of the month at the Barnes and Noble on Adams Road, the mm -hmm. new one yeah. in Rochester. Yeah. That's um, a great new shop. It is. And so after story time, story time's at 11 and at 1130 on the second Saturday of the month, I host what's called the Storytellers Workshop. And so we take... Uh, and it's, again, elementary school kids tend to have sure. the most fun with it. Yeah. And we take an existing story. Uh, our most recent one last uh, this month was Little Red Riding Hood. Okay. And so we tell the story of Little Red Riding Hood, and then we ask, what if? And so we t what if Granny was a ninja? And mm. then we and then the kids act out that story. Fun. And so we have a really good time, and it's getting them engaged in, in, in using their imagination and seeing that just because it's an old story doesn't mean you can't put a new twist on it. I love the idea of oral storytelling. Yes. You know, I, I've been, I just wrote a blog post about this idea that um, audiobooks are just another version of oral storytelling. Uh, and I yes. love that we have the ability to introduce this legacy to our children. We can yeah. teach them as storytelling as it can be an, an interactive process. Yes. So I think it's wonderful that you're doing that. Yes. And we've got, uh, one, my favorite part is I've hunted down little props. So there's headbands and so nice. the, the Big Bed Wolf is a headband and I made a cape for Little Red Riding Hood and with an actual hood and everything. Uh -huh. So it was, it was a lot of fun. And then um, I've also really want to encourage teen writers. So actually uh, the third Thursday of the month, I'm very busy Lately. You are. <laughs> the third Thursday of the month, again, at um, Barnes & Noble, The Villages on Adams Road, where at 7 o'clock, we're having a teen writers group. And the feedback that I've gotten so far from teens is that that is actually, we're going to focus on uh, college essays. And so we're... Rather than we'll, we'll discuss fiction, but I think the focus is going to be on the next stage the in next their stage. writing. Exactly, that's exquisite. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you you so are much. crazy busy. You're almost <laughs> as busy as I am. Thank yes. you so much. I really, really appreciate you coming out today, and uh, we look forward to being a part of your writing community. Thank you so much for having me. This has been Thank wonderful. You. Thanks. Have Thanks. a great afternoon. You as well. Thank you.